Thank you, Blake, for your scheduled talk. Very good. So uh, these days we're all experiencing this uh, lockdown or what we call in this in Singapore, the circuit breaker. And as you've probably noticed, uh, one thing that you'll experience during this time is uh, boredom. So yesterday, a, uh, the digital copy of the Atlantic magazine came on my screen and I noticed there was uh, an article about boredom. It's quite interesting because a new book had just come out about boredom. And, um, <clears throat> And uh, the article was a review of that book and a bunch of other books that talk about this from either a philosophical point of view or a psychoanalytic point of view or a uh, data-oriented psycho psychology point of view or just a, a regular person's point of view. So I was reading all this stuff and then about halfway through the article, this one statement that uh, somebody who wrote an article in one of these books uh, said really struck me uh, because he said uh, one of the results of boredom is introspection. I thought, what? Introspection? Wow, that sounds kind of like meditation. So um, one thing you may not know about Zen, or you've probably experienced it, but may, may not have thought about it philosophically or something, is that uh, uh, Zen uses certain kinds of techniques to set up a situation where you're actually going to be bored. So if you've ever been a to a retreat, you know, it's kind of interesting for the first few sittings or the first few days, but after about 15 or 20 days, it'll get really boring. And after 90 or 100 days, it is really boring. So um, that reminded me of, um, of being in China and going to Bodhidharma's cave. So we used to take all these trips to China, uh, sponsored by the Hong Kong Zen Center. So we would, uh, one time we went to Shaolin Temple, which is famous for Kung Fu and all that kind of stuff. It's actually a tourist site. But um, up above the Shaolin Temple is uh, Bodhidharma's cave. So we walked up to the Bodhidharma's, Bodhidharma's cave on top of Mount Song. And um, I was shocked to see that uh, it's this small little cave. It's about half the size of the kitchen here in the Zen Center. And um, I was just thinking, wow, you sit in there for nine years. You know, that's the traditional view of it, practicing meditation. Well, that must be pretty boring. You know, how, how do you, how did, how did he survive? I mean, you look around there. I mean, there wasn't even a Starbucks there and you're on top of this mountain, you know? So uh, one time Zen master uh, Sung Sung said that uh, uh, the biggest hindrance to uh, practicing is actually boredom. But of course, the whole thing is designed to produce boredom. So what's going on here? Well, what's going on here is just what this guy in the book said, that uh, boredom, uh, one of the results of boredom is introspection, right? So we designed, or we use these techniques to uh, create boredom. So if you're the Buddha living in a palace with a lot of dancing girls and all kinds of palace intrigue and all kinds of crap going on, and then you leave and go sit underneath a tree, you can almost bet that he's experiencing uh, boredom. And in fact, that's what it's designed to do. So it takes away all these distractions so you can start looking inside yourself. So he leaves home and he doesn't go to a library. He doesn't go to talk to interesting teachers, although he does he does study under two teachers, but he finds them unsatisfactory. So in the end, he just ends up sitting underneath a tree. And if you sat underneath a tree for very long, you know, it's pretty boring. There might be some crickets jumping around or clouds go by and it rains and then it doesn't rain. But mostly that's all not very interesting stuff. So it creates this situation where uh, you're almost like forced to start looking inside. So that's the introspection part of it. 
So uh, Zen means look inside, look inside, look inside. So that's what the Buddha did, look inside, look inside, look inside. So that's, um, that's the kind of technique. Unfortunately, this kind of technique isn't very interesting. So you start looking for a better Zen center, or you think, well, maybe I'll go to India, or maybe I'll go to Tibet to practice meditation. You know? So um, many times those are just distractions to keep you from doing what you were actually supposed to be doing as a technique to find your true self. So Zen means find your true self and help the world. Uh, I thought about Bodhidharma's cave, but I also thought about our teacher in, in, um, in Hong Kong. Her name is Dei Kwan Sini, and she's the teacher there. So she spent three years living in a cave on a river that separates Thailand from Myanmar, or we also know it as Burma. So imagine living in a cave in the middle of nowhere for three years. It's not very interesting, right? So back behind that is the lack of interest that creates the introspection, which creates the wisdom concerning about what you really are. So actually, uh, you can think of this uh, shutdown, this COVID-19 pandemic as being a, a negative thing, but it also has a positive side. And it has a positive side in terms of it allows you to break through your habits and the things that are always attracting you and making you feel good or the things that make you feel bad. And it, it kind of breaks that link for a second so you can see yourself. So any kind of practice technique, no matter what it is, uh, will produce boredom ultimately. And that boredom is just a dimension of this looking inside at yourself. So if things are too interesting, actually, that's not so good because they can become a distraction. So we're always looking for distractions for ourselves. But the uh, technique of Buddhism and the technique that the Buddha used, and obviously the technique that the Bodhidharma used, was to uh, take away the distractions and just uh, create a situation uh, which, from one way of looking at it, produces boredom, but from another as, uh, side looks uh, is a technique which is actually beneficial, which is uh, this kind of self-reflection or looking inside. So um, uh, that kind of points towards how we may use this pandemic actually to help our practice where we can't do all the usual stuff we do. And uh, that allows us to draw back a little bit and you could just think of it as a uh, kind of uh, retreat. So that would be like daily life kind of practicing and uh, becoming aware of what we're doing, what we're thinking, uh, all of these kinds of things. And that can allow us to actually let go of that so we can return to our true self and help the world. So that's the uh, good side, the good side of the pandemic. So I want to thank you all for joining us today. Um, and we do have a little bit of time here for some questions. Uh, so if anybody has a please ask. Okay. Uh, yes, I have a question. This is Carol Schmitz, and I say this respectfully. Um, I didn't understand when you said uh, Desang said, Sung San, Gen Master Sung San said that uh, boredom is a great hindrance, is a hindrance to practice. And in the very next sentence, you said, but Zen is, is uh, creates, has all these opportunities to create boredom and you create boredom. I don't see where we have, where, where Zen talks about creating boredom. I don't see that in the, in my knowledge of, of the texts or in my knowledge of the teaching boredom. I have always felt personally that I'm not afflicted by boredom, by boredom. I think if you're bored, you're just not paying, you're not paying attention. If you're bored, you're not paying attention because there is so much going on to be aware of. In a cave, there's plenty of interesting stuff, you know. So I don't understand, Sung San saying it's, it's a hindrance, and then you're saying, well, we're creating it. I don't understand that, please. <laughs> Well, everything, everything is created by your mind, right? So your mind will create boredom. 
And boredom is just a form of anger. So, you know, the big hindrances that human beings have are desire, anger, and boredom. So what does boredom mean? Boredom means you don't like this situation and you want to find something good or something interesting. That's many words for that too. So uh, the reason Zen Master Sung San said that the biggest hindrance to practice is boredom is because in that retreat, your mind will make, I don't like this retreat, right? So that's why it's very important to have a big vow and to practice so that you can let go of whatever anger is associated with it. So if you can just let go, then the retreat is just the retreat and everyday life is just everyday life. It isn't good, it isn't bad. So when the sixth patriarch got enlightenment, he heard just one line from the Diamond Sutra, which was when thinking arises in your mind, don't attach to it. So if you're bored, that's probably natural. If you're not bored, that's also natural. The important thing is not to attach to it. When you let go, then you return to your original self. Your original self, like you say, I mean, you're perfectly correct, is not bored. It's just there in this moment. So in this moment, you want to just come back. So some people will find that boring. Their mind will make, wow, this is really boring. I don't know if you've done a long solo retreat, but if your mind is making anything out of that, it can be quite boring and people will flee. I mean, I used to lead 90 day retreats all the time and people were always running away, you know, and they would give some really good excuse, you know, like I have to call my mom or uh, this, is, this retreat is crappy, I'm leaving but their mind is making that. I mean, they had plenty of uh, food. Uh, the building was heated. All you had to do was sit there. Like the Buddha could have got up, got up from the tree and left before he found the big answer, right? But he didn't, and that's why we remember him. If uh, he had gotten up, we wouldn't remember him. So this, uh, this boredom, when, when Zen Master Sung Sung says that boredom is a hindrance, that's because your mind is making that hindrance and your mind calls that hindrance boredom. So that's why it's a hindrance. It's just a uh, kind of, we, we say it's a kind of technique, but that's just a word for describing it. We're creating a situation where you can pay attention to yourself, that's all. And you can yes, call that boring or not boring, as you please. <laughs> Don't thank attach you. to it. Okay, is that clear? Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, any, any situation, whether you're in a retreat in Korea or in China or at the Kansas Zen Center, you're going to find interesting things there, right? Uh, and, uh, a spider will crawl, crawl across the floor in front of your field of vision while you're sitting. Uh, a car will go by and you'll know, hey, that's a 58 Chevy. That's a real classic, you know. But those things are always happening. But you always want to come back to this moment and you want to come back to looking inside because that's uh, the basic technique that the Buddha used to return to his true self, to wake up. So that's the basic technique that we have that's called keeping yeah. it now in mind. Okay? I think I, I, think I was uh, just discussing the... Uh, 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 trying to understand you is a hindrance in one breath and then the next breath you're saying and zen is created you know we want to create it so you're boring. using the same right. word in, in two different ways i thought okay so that's but i understand what you're saying thank you very much yeah yeah boredom isn't good or bad it's created by your mind like you said you know it's made by us so if you let go of it then you just return to this moment Okay. <laughs> you look. You talk about looking within. And I've heard people say that before, but what are you looking at or looking for? Or where is that looking? What is the direction of that looking? And what's the... I'm right. confused by that statement. Right. So there's many different kinds of uh, Zen teaching words and Buddhist teaching words and... Every religion has teaching words, right? So what you want to do is uh, not attach to the words, but see what it, the words are pointing at. Uh, so looking in, uh, we could say look inside, right? So the Buddha looked 
in Zen, we always say the Buddha looked inside, looked inside, looked inside, looked inside, then boom. So uh, even boom is a teaching word, right? So there's many teaching words. So looking inside just means paying attention to yourself. Like I said, that this uh, boredom, uh, or this guy said in this book, that boredom produces self-reflection. So self-reflection would be another word for that too. But of course that word, is, those words are, uh, if you attach to them, you think, uh, oh, I am supposed to look inside. Well, there is no inside and outside. That's made by your thinking. There is no I. That's made by your thinking. And look is a word that's associated with, with the eyes. And it's used as a metaphor for being aware. right? And even being aware is a teaching word, which points to an experience that you cannot describe. So all, although it happens all the time. So these teaching words are always pointing towards some kind of experience and they're all actually inadequate. So Zen master Sun Sun would say, open your mouth is already a mistake. So if I say, look inside, yeah, that's a mistake, but it's pointing towards uh, this moment world that we live in. And it means to wake up to that. Right, so there I've used the metaphor wake up. So everybody knows what it means, but nobody knows how to do it or exactly what it is. But you all know in your guts that it happens every morning and it may happen a couple of times during the night if you're an old guy like me. So you know what it means, uh, but the words just point towards it. So very important is don't attach to the words. So this look inside, look inside, look inside, look inside means uh, practice meditation or meditate or pay attention or wake up just now or keep a just now mind. You know, there's many, 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 many words for that. It's important to actually experience it moment to moment to moment to moment in your life. So uh, that's what I was pointing at by using those words. So now I hope that helps. Anyway, so now we've come to the end. Now we've come to the end of our session, and I believe that uh, 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 Judy will have some announce some Zen Center announcements. So thank you all for attending today. <laughs>